I currently drive the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive which has an LFP battery and I believe it's currently the best electric vehicle and trim in the US market. Particularly for its mix of being a good daily driver, its design and engineering, its performance variables and its road tripping capabilities. The refreshed Model 3 also dubbed the Model 3 Highland is expected next year and we shall refer to it as the new Model 3 in this video. We'll address the current Model 3 as the old Model 3. The Tesla Model 3 Highland was first unveiled in China in late August, early September and then in Europe in October 2023. In this video, we will place the specs of the new Model 3 alongside the existing one and present the major changes and enhancements in the new Model 3 in comparison with its immensely successful predecessor. Only two trims of the new Model 3 are currently on offer in Europe and China. The Model 3 rear wheel drive and the Model 3 long range. The Model 3 performance is expected to be made available next year. And those are the only two trims that we will include in our comparison here. Most of these specs are likely to stay the same in the US version and should make for a good look in side by side. The European specs you see here are as listed on the German website of Tesla. At first, we'll look at the base trim rear wheel drive. The LFP battery in the refreshed rear wheel drive is exactly the same as that in the old Model 3 rear wheel drive and it has a rare permanent magnet motor. The max DC charge rate is 170 kilowatt hours in both, but it's the max AC level 2 charging where the new Model 3 has been given a significant upgrade. It's 11 kilowatts or 48 amps against the 7.7 .7 kilowatts or 32 amps of the existing rear wheel drive Model 3. The current Model 3 rear wheel drive has a range of 267 to 272 miles EPA. And the refreshed version in Europe indicates a significant jump to 319 miles WLTP, adjusted from kilometers to miles. Note that the EPA is significantly conservative than the WLTP standard and my gut feeling of the actual range here in the US is around 285 to 300 miles. There are some improvements in the performance variables as well. The old Model 3 rear wheel drive offers 271 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque against the 284 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque in the new Model 3 rear wheel drive. The new Model 3 brings 6.1 seconds 0 to 100 kilometers which is 5.8 to 5.9 seconds for the 0 to 60 miles per hour as will be seen here in the US. Broadly the same as the existing Model 3 rear wheel drive. The new Model 3 has a reduced top speed of 125 miles per hour against the 140 miles per hour and 145 miles per hour of the old Model 3 for both of the new trims. That's probably on account of the tire selection. I believe that this could change in the US with differing regulations than Europe. These are the main spec level differences between the rear wheel drive trims of the old and new versions. The new Model 3 long range has a battery pack of 78 kilowatt hours usable, 86 kilowatt hours gross, a max DC charge rate of 250 kilowatts, AC rate of 11 kilowatts, and a WLTP range of 390 miles. It brings a 0 to 100 kilometers in 4.2 seconds, or roughly 4 seconds for 0 to 60 miles per hour. The old Model 3 long range has a battery pack of 72 kilowatt hours usable, 75 kilowatt hours gross, a max DC charge rate of 250 kilowatts, 11 kilowatts of onboard AC charging, and an EPA rated range of 315 to 333 miles. The old Model 3 would deliver a 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds and sport a top speed of 145 miles per hour. The core performance variables too are significantly up for the new edition. At 498 horsepower and 364 pound-feet of torque 
against the 425 horsepower and 475 pound feet of torque in the old Model 3. The new Model 3 long range is probably 5 to 7 percent more efficient than the outgoing model. I would shave off 10 to 15 percent of that range with my EPA assumptions. Assuming roughly 340 to 360 real world miles for the new Model 3 long range when in the US. The dimensions too are interesting. In storage, the new Model 3 has 21.2 cubic feet of additional rear cargo space against the 19.8 cubic feet in the old models, making for 24.1 cubic feet of total cargo space against the 21.2 cubic feet in the old models. The new and the old both have the same 3.1 cubic feet front trunk that looks exactly similar. The curb weight of the new Model 3 rear wheel drive is 3,883 pounds against the 3,557.4 pounds of the old Model 3 rear wheel drive. Interestingly, however, the new long range has a curb weight of 4,021 pounds against the 4,034 pounds of the old Model 3 long range, making the higher trim lighter and the lower trim heavier. I will like to reconfirm this in a video later once the model is available here in the US. The new Model 3 has 37.8 inches of rear headroom and 34.5 inches of rear legroom against the 37.7 inches and 35.2 inches of the same in the old Model 3. Both the old and the new Model 3s have the same headroom and legroom in the front and a wheelbase of 113.2 inches. The ground clearance of the old Model 3 is 5.5 inches against the reduced 5.4 inches in the new one. The Model 3 refresh is 185.8 inches long, an inch longer than the old Model 3, which is 184.8 inches. The new Model 3 is 82.2 inches wide, exactly like the old Model 3, and 56.7 inches tall. 0.1 inches shorter than the old Model 3, which is 56.8 inches in height. It's neck and neck similar in size with very few physical differences on the dimensions. Let's now look at some of the other interesting features and differences as are immediately visible and observed. The Model 3 refresh has a completely redone front suspension that will improve the driving experience and hopefully reduce the bumpy feel. Among the only major complaints with the old Model 3. I don't think the Model 3 will have an adaptive damper like the Model S, highly unlikely that at that price. The Model 3 has a completely new headlight design with the fog light accommodated within. The big letdown is the continued reliance on the vision based system with no ultrasonic sensors in the front. I have previously highlighted the many problems of that as have many who follow Tesla. The camera based proximity detection has stayed a work in progress for some time now. It's really early but the cameras look the same as on the outgoing Model 3. The double pane glass is now on both the front and rear doors unlike only the front doors in the old Model 3. Probably the entire car now has a harder feeling acoustic glass. The new Model 3 has an upgraded sound system with 17 speakers and dual amplifiers. The car interior now has ambient lighting with material that looks fairly improved. The Model 3 refresh has a 15.4 inches center display, the same as in the old Model 3. The front trunk looks the same except for one change. The washer fluid has now been moved down at the opening of the trunk from one that was nearer the windscreen. The steering wheel size seems the same as the old Model 3 with I believe much better haptic feedback. With a camera button now on the wheel, horn in the center and similar volume controls as in the old Model 3. The turn signals are now on the steering like the Model S and X and of course the stocks are gone. The Model 3 has ventilated seats against the heated only in the old Model 3. The park reverse drive neutral or the shifters are on the screen like the Model S and X with backup options on top ahead of the rear view mirror alongside the hazard lights control. 
Interestingly, if you saw my previous videos of the Cybertruck, disappearing stocks with backup gear shifters at the top appears as a clear change in Tesla's design language. The loss of stocks has received wide displeasure already and will be tough to digest for many. The hazard lights button is now a touch sensitive control from a physical button in the old Model 3. In the Model S and X, the physical shifter replacing the options on the stocks is at the bottom under the center display. The glove box on the Model 3 refresh now has a magnetized close. There is now an 8 inches rear screen that brings climate control, infotainment options like the standard music app, YouTube, etc. for the rear seat passengers. They also get touch sensitive lights. You will also see a new tail light design opening the trunk. The Model 3 refresh has the same power trunk which looks unchanged. The old Model 3 has a single 12 volt socket in the center console and has two 15 watts USB C compatible ports located in the front compartment of the center console. One USB A port in the glove box that's equipped with a pre formatted flash drive that can communicate with the vehicle and save the dash cam sentry mode footage. Two additional USB-C ports located in the rear of the center console on vehicles manufactured post-2020 that can't communicate with the car but serve for using and charging USB connected devices. The old Model 3 has two 15 watts wireless charging pads, so five USB ports in all, one 12 volt point and two wireless charging pads. The refreshed Model 3 has four USB ports in all, one less, where three can output 42 watts or two approximately 65 watts. To get some rough perspective, these ports could charge a MacBook in little over an hour from 0 to 100%. One USB C port is in the rear compartment of the center console, two are below the rear touch screen, one USB A is in the glove box with the same functions as the old Model 3 and has the same 15 watts wireless charging pads as in the old Model 3. The new Model 3 has a 12 amp low voltage 16 amp peak continuous power outlet in the center console compartment, much like the old Model 3. That was all that we could compile on this car that's yet to be made available here in the US. I will look forward to driving the new Model 3 the moment I get one and we will also provide an update on this video with changes that we could see in the actual car once driven. Please remember that details presented here are all as reported by Tesla's websites from different locations other than the US and other sources and are subject to confirmation once the actual car is made available to us. Until then they should be taken as such. At the time of making this video, Tesla announced that a $7,500 federal tax credit to eligible buyers would not be available after December 31, 2023 on the Model 3 rear wheel drive and long range. The very two trims you see in our video here. The pricing of the Model 3 should stay competitive and its recent loss of tax credit eligibility should be a factor to closely monitor. In France too, where the electric vehicle cash incentive has new criteria that includes the amount of carbon emitted in the manufacturing of an electric vehicle, the Tesla Model 3 has lost out on eligibility, though the Model Y has not. This clearly indicates an unapproved supply chain link. This is a developing subject to follow closely. I will not be surprised with newer guidelines and adjustments to follow to keep this car affordable for the sake of the broader electrification goals, one way or the other. Whatever be the geopolitical considerations, protections and restrictions, they don't go well with growth and adoption. I will strongly recommend this car to anybody looking at going electric, to those looking at that perfect daily driver and those looking at an above average performance in most driving scenarios. See you in the next one and thank you for watching.